This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, where there's a refrigerator truck parked out front. Wait, what are you doing with my view? This is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We're ready to talk tech, get geeky, and have a lot of fun here uh, with people in and around the Pittsburgh area doing fun, geeky things uh, with me uh, uh, live from Studio C. In the Big D of Dormont, PA, is, uh, we probably shouldn't call it the Big D, uh, is John Chichilla. <laughs> He's a gadget guru, a big bank international esquire. How's it going today? I, th- I think every time a van shows up out front, you should turn on a Wi-Fi network that's called like FBI van and call the police and be like, there's a weird van outside. And every time it shows up, this Wi-Fi hotspot shows up. And, and just see what happens. See if they make all the vans move. Right. And then you get your talker stand <laughs> back. Right, because I need to cause more controversy here on Broadway Avenue. Uh, <laughs> also, we have a great guest with us. She is a podcaster. She's, she is returning to the show, and also she'll be our guest on the awesome chat later this week. Subscribe to that. Marta Napoleon Mazzoni of Marta on the Move podcast joining us. Hey, everybody. How are we doing? I got all three of your names right you again. You did. That's you two did. in one night. I know. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. How you been doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Uh, real quick for the people, uh, the uninformed, what is Marta on the Move about? <laughs> Marta on the Move is essentially I interview people that move me and what moves them um, throw in some travel inspirations, general notary, interesting people and places. Awesome. And just back from New York City, too. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and, of course, this is your awesome cast. That's why I say awesome a lot. Uh, you can check us out at awesomecast.com to subscribe to this and the awesome chat and the awesome tips and everything else that we have going on there. And you can subscribe to the awesome cast as a podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as the video versions on the awesome cast uh, Facebook and video page. And also, please follow the uh, Facebook page, especially because that's where we go live every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. You can join us in the chat room like our good friends like uh, Wheels, Brandon, uh, Crazy Krause has been hanging out with us. I know he's watching our beach view view before the refrigerator truck uh showed up uh so and really appreciating that uh it, oh yes stop your roll here that's not my role there's there's a question i'm never in, gonna get my roll back there's a question in the dock that could be affecting show quality so i'm bringing it to your attention thank you chilla oh no no it, yeah there, there's it, it's, it's a different source chilla it's okay. okay it's okay it's okay um but anyways um that now i don't know where i was at i guess you just need to take what it from do, the top what do i oh from the top please subscribe to us on itunes stitcher speaker no wait that's not right <laughs> <laughs> um professionals throw it out to our streaming partners our friends that are t- uh, carrying us over on the river's edge pgh.com as well as the 405 media um we're, we're streaming i know on the 405 every uh weekday at 9 a.m pacific time and then it's uh, noon uh eastern time for the rest of you guys if you want to catch up with the show uh so thank you to all of them uh, helping us get out to a few more people out there and also thank you to our patreon supporters you can support us at patreon.com slash awesome cast thanks to our coffee club member matt weller uh, he gets all the uh, uh, super geeky deep dive stuff that we do, like probably the thing that I was telling Chilla about a little earlier, um, about how I screwed up my internet this entire time in the old studio. And and also thanks to our uh, fan of the show level, uh, Mike Michael Fedor, uh, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter, as well as Mel- Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter. Thanks for supporting the show. Um, you guys supporting it. Uh, really means a lot and uh, we literally need to keep the lights on now in the new studio Uh, so if anybody else wants to do that but you don't have to please share the show tell our people about other people about it subscribe rate on itunes or wherever you might find us so that other people can expand the awesomeness in the awesome cast so yes chilla can can, can we do a ten dollar brick contributor level where where we can get the brick wall back (laughs) we're gonna build it brick (laughs) by brick right (laughs) sure 
give that hey that's an idea they get uh br- bring bring chilla his wall back uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh we'll look into that chill we'll look into logistics but if you if you have any suggestions especially if you're contributing to the patreon you are our boss so we are definitely going to listen to you above all else here because you are contributing your executive producers of the shows uh we're some level of producer i don't know exactly how hollywood works but anyways um so with that let's get into our awesome thing of the week and marta you have a really interesting one i do have an interesting one so my interesting one that I was looking at gadgets and tech of the week was that you can set up your own drive-in in in your backyard for very, very cheaply. And that caught my attention because years ago I smuggled like a a student. I didn't smuggle. It was on the, like the black market where somebody came in with a bunch of projectors that they got somewhere, somewhere. And even back then I bought it for like $400 and the bulbs are super expensive and it, it was like cost an arm and a leg to try and have that movie theater experience. But now they're doing it. They're, it's like nickels and dimes, maybe not nickels and dimes, but it's pretty cheap. Mm-hmm. So they had all of the gadgets. They had everything that you needed to put up to make your experience like a drive-in movie theater. And it included not the huge speaker system that we used to have to drag out that we had in college. It's like, miniature speaker bars and they had all the chairs they had the projector and how easy it was to set up um the projector itself and it was just awesome that's great uh, you know it's amazing you know looking at we we, we talked in the last couple of weeks of um the little uh mike you know pico projectors and things like these hundred dollar ones that that we're using and even wheels in the chat room picked one up after brian uh, uh, Crawford had had just suggested it, and he hooked up his Chromecast and was watching the show yeah. on his wall. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's how easy it is. Yeah, it's you amazing. just need a couple cords and you're good to go. I remember like just throwing up the sheet, you know, but it's it's gone so much. It's so much further than that now. <laughs> I, I pulled up real quick. I, I I just I just just kind of threw in a Google search. Here's one from from July on ABC News. Is this one of them you were looking at? Oh no, this so is my friend has one of those. That's a blow up one. That's a blow um, up one, and all the kids are in like little box cars. Yeah, sitting. <laughs> That's really cute though. So my friend brought for my 35th birthday, and my backyard is not big, but he brought mm-hmm. um his blow up one, and I'll tell you what, it went up really quickly, like super quick, and came down really quickly as well. So that's another option. Yeah. It's awesome. I love movies, so <laughs> I just had to throw that one out there. Awesome. Uh Chilla, what's your awesome thing of the week? So my and I usually don't get into the the, you know, Intel made an announcement about a new chipset that yeah, it's faster, blah, 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 blah. You'll see it in machines. But it, Intel actually announced their eighth generation chipset. Um part of this is it's a refresh of the existing KB Lake. So as we talked earlier in the year about the new MacBook Pros and not having 32 uh, gig of RAM, et cetera, et cetera, you're still going to be under that that 16 gig limit. But what I thought was interesting, and you might too, is they are no longer creating uh, dual core chips. What? So yeah, so there'll be no more dual core dual core chips. Every chip that they produce, whether it be i3, i5, i7, even down to the U series, that's like that that old Core M processor, everything is going to be quad core and higher, which means that every processor will have eight threads running through it. So I, I, when you think about machines like the Mac Mini that still run that dual core processor and some of the lower end equipment, um, there's going to be no more of that. They're they're saying it's due it's due to them wanting to handle things like 4K video, VR, and 3D. Um, so obviously, more machines will need that. I, but what I think we're going to end up seeing is those four core chips coming in at the dual core price. So everybody's going to get huge spec bumps with new hardware. And if you think back to, let's just say you're you're a person that replaces their machine even every four years, these types of processors, you're probably going to see like a, a two to 400% increase in performance just by replacing your machine. So I'm looking forward to how different companies accept these chips and move them into their equipment. Um, Intel made a statement that you're going to see um, 
the first mainstream machines using these chips in the fall um, as we hit the holiday seasons and potentially even some some other equipment using them even sooner. Um, this, this has happened in the past, like when I think Microsoft released the Surface 4, they were the first one on the KB Lake processors. Um, again, like I said, it's, it's usually not something that's that incredibly different to me or you know it's just a minor spec bump every year but i feel like this is really going to change the platform as far as far as people buying new machines and the the baseline of what those machines bring to the table so basically yeah basically if you went to walmart best buy and went to try to get a computer like it, it's not really much different than the year before right and so you're saying that we're, this is going to be significant is yeah. this going to be? A, is this going to do a lot for gaming or you know, like just general higher end? Work but, well, or? you think about yeah. think about it when you were trying to use the the dual core device. I had to do green screen work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, three year old processor, dual core, even with the i seven. This is going to bring a lot of that capability forward. So, okay. and I'm I'm also wondering when you think about um, Microsoft releasing. Fall Creators update and some of the built-in video editing they're bringing in. Now, any machine that's released is probably going to be able to use that technology without a bunch of hiccups. Or your the one hundred ninety-nine dollar PC at Walmart is going to be a lot better in six months than the one hundred ninety-nine PC today. You know is, what I mean? Is that the time frame, John? Is that is it six months? Right around there. Yeah, it's well. They're saying the first machines are going to hit. They're going to hit in the fall. So in the fall, man. There's yeah. people out there that just got one. <laughs> they're just so <laughs> mad right now. Yeah, take back if you just bought a computer. You may want to think take about it hold, no, hold, bring out the old the old one and dust it off and um, take the new one back. Or for, should you wait three months? Should you like wait for the? Is it going to be like you know Vista? Should you wait a little while? <laughs> it, no, because this, so this is the second if you gen. Get the kinks out. This is the second gen of the KB Lake, so um, this is already kind of version two. Okay. Um, right. And and I feel like if you get into the I'm going to wait mentality, it, it, there's a new processor line every year. So yeah. mm -hmm. by the time it's six months old, eh, you know, the new one's going to be out in six months, and then you, you wait, wait six months after that. That's kind of my attitude. Perpetual wait. <laughs> like, I'll wait. I'll wait another <laughs> five years until... Till this one Until something breaks. Till this computer <laughs> dies, right? Yeah, it, yeah exactly. Um, you know, when Facebook starts load, stops loading anymore, then it's like, yep. yeah, maybe we should maybe, move on. maybe I should do something about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, this is a studio that's run on half of this stuff is like a yeah. Core Duo two. So uh, you know, we 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 know about running it until it breaks uh, around here. I don't even know what this is an AMD. I don't even know what it, that thing is. Updates. It's somehow you know maybe if we updated like you know John's lip sync would be a little better. <laughs> <laughs> for instance but uh you know it, it, it happens at least the network works now um <laughs> you know you, you're talking about that and and, and you throw back techie thing um it, it, the more you're talking about how oh you can do all the video features that come in windows it reminds me of like mmx in like you know, around 1999 yeah. you know when that was a thing in Pentium processors you know with the mmx technology which is extra instructions and all your multimedia is going to work better right uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it, it just kind of reminded me, me me of that a little bit. You know, yeah, your, I, your your multimedia CD ROMs are going to run so much smoother now. I mean, you, that goes all the way back to like the what is it, four eighty six DX and SX with the math yep. process or oh, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Where I I feel like they're they're not giving you some kind of additional instruction set or some kind of gimmick to 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 jump onto. They're just merely taking all of the processors and saying, you know what, there's going to be no more dual core processors. Everything's going to be quad core. Um, and it, uh, to me, that that's not just a, a gimmick. It is full strength of the processor. It's hmm. awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, we hit movie. We hit we hit we hit the deep computer tech. Um, I'm going to go uh, back in the day. Now, I was not the most diehard Dungeons and Dragons person, but somebody else was here. Um, and a lot of my friends were, uh, and, and I have the, my toe in Dungeons and Dragons, and I appreciate a good game of that and some other other role playing games. But I was really excited, and, and maybe this is the kind of thing that brings me back to this. Um, so finally, finally, according to Motherboard, there is going to be an official digital tool set for Dungeons and Dragons, guys. 
So like to the point where, and we're talking about like sites and software on tablets, iPhones, browsers that you can like the, the in this motherboard article they talked about like in, in like a minute they just auto rolled like their known character named Muzzle or something and, and like they were ready to go. Right. And I remember that being like a, a big thing. Like it's like you, you, you took a night to just figure out your character. Right. And uh, even to the point where they're going to have Twitch integration. Uh, I didn't dive too much into that. But, you know, that idea, you know, we've talked about with some other things. And I ha- actually have done a session of, of role playing with the creator of a wrestling role player game um, for Wrestling Mayhem show. You know, like, you know, doing these as live streams. You know, and, and playing your characters and, and going through that process is, is, you know, is something people people like to watch. And it's kind of a cool thing to broadcast. And now, you know, they're kind of putting that in mind um, with with these uh, tools. So and, and you can buy your books. You can buy your your dungeon. Are you a dungeon dragon? I've seen you looking at this. <laughs> no. Th- so I have I've played it before i i've played it in like the raw form where it was just the storytelling and things like that Mm -hmm. i have to admit i feel like people are going to be either loving this or hating it oh yeah yeah right because i mean in my mind it kind of it kind of feels like it's taking away from everybody getting together and having this like it's like it's kind of like the last thing that tech hasn't touched (laughs) You know what I mean? Not the last thing, but it's one of the last things. Storytelling and um, meeting up with friends and doing things like that. So what's so what's like the next thing if it's going? I don't know. Well, I I'm, I'm old school. I think already because I, I feel like things like Google Hangout and Twitch and, and, and Skype, like you can already kind of you don't have to be in the same room. So you no. can play that game. Like when we played our RPG game, like the guy lived in like Chicago or something that was running it. I'm a couple of us were in the Pittsburgh area. One guy's in Poughkeepsie. You know, I think that kind of opens that up a little bit because I know one big problem is everybody that was like diehard D D D D and D, like ah, oh, we're not in the same area. Getting everybody get together, off. yeah, like and that kind of breaks that down a little. So bit. that's the good it's, part of it. It's, it's not a, meant to be yeah. a replacement, right? Yeah. But on, but also, D and D is a little heady for me to get into. I, I I mean I've always jumped in with somebody else as a, as a storyteller. Yeah, as the storyteller, you gotta have as a the dungeon, dungeon master. master yeah. yeah, like somebody that was like the pro dungeon master, yeah. right? So I think like seeing something like this kind of um, helps that burden a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, that that maybe I'll jump in and, and can roll it a little little, little I think easier. Mi- I think Missy's like. I think Missy Missy is a is I guess say Missy's had some pretty. I'm kind of curious to see major D and D experiences. So he used to play every weekend, practically in college. And when I saw this, I was kind of, this is interesting because Sorg, you've known me since I've been out of college. How often have I played D and D? Right. Now, there was that vampire dark ages. Campaign when you that went pretty deep, talk but. about great storytellers, <laughs> we had an amazing dungeon master. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that I looked forward to when we would play. He doesn't live here. Ah. which means this could open it up to get getting my college D and D buddies oh. back together. Okay. Well that's, that's just romantic. <laughs> it is romantic. <laughs> what? But no, that's, that's not that's, all romance has to be. No, no, you know. no. Yeah, absolutely. No. And, and that's the thing. Like I'm looking at it as a potential opportunity to rekindle old friendships and maybe, you know, bring Sorg along for, for some fun with it. Um, but also getting back in touch with people that I haven't really talked to in a whole lot because just but, time and distance. Do these tools these tools don't replace the dungeon master and the storytelling? They're just no. the supplementary tools to roll your character and to to keep and store your character. What would be interesting is will we see to, to what Missy's talking about? Will we see much like they have podcasts where it's kind of a murder mystery played out or whatnot? Will we see Dungeons and Dragons? style podcast where oh. it's the storyteller using all of these tools and everyone in disparate locations kind of chiming in. Oh, that would be interesting. Actually, you kind of already do. Like they they're out there. Are they? They're definitely out there. There there's role playing game ones in in uh even uh um uh, that would be super fun if you could just get into the character. Right, <laughs> right. And then you could become, have the accent and just go go down just that go, rabbit go hole. Go deep into just it. Follow right? it. 
and, and you, you you split it up to like a half an hour hour episode at a time maybe yeah. you just play a giant session split it up in the episodes and boom put it out there this might be your next podcast <laughs> and next and, and next on Sorgatron Media right, right now right and yeah I mean somebody out there is, is just like we were just talking about like how do you find your passion in podcasting mm-hmm. you know it just comes to you somebody out there just heard this and is like oh my god I'm starting this how do I do it? that would take that would take a lot of um organization absolutely but yeah. if somebody's a, a, a big dungeon master to begin with i don't think that's too far to go there no that's that's i like this idea well, all know. right we had a little bit of a glitch there we are back i don't know if we could share any of the things we came up with off air about dungeons and dragons but <laughs> check it out um and whatever new apparent uh podcast coming soon the Zoratron media network around uh, dungeons and dragons Right, Chilla. So, <laughs> um, so I want to give a shout out to our friends, of course, Slice on Broadway, supporting the Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza um, here on the show, and uh, and of our all of our friends that do come in here uh, around their lunch break. Although, although I know Marta has been um, uh, uh, maybe maybe influenced by the Mexican around here as well. So, mm. Mm, some good places, uh, but we do. But thank you so much to our friend Slice on Broadway, uh, right up the line here in Beachview, um, right along the T lines, the only place where the T and God knows what else that just went by that I've never seen before on this road. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a work truck or something. Um, but uh, they're also down at Carnegie uh, PA down on Main Street as well as PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, great stuff. Online ordering. I hear that you can Grubhub it all the way over to uh, where uh, Uncle Crappy lives over in Bellevue as well. So uh, check it out. It's great stuff. It's awesome pizza. And thank you to them for supporting the show. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and let them know the awesome cast sent you. All right. We got a couple other submitted stories. I think Missy might have had one or two as well. Um, Oh, Missy, tell me about what's going on in Harmer Township. Oh, so... Random Facebook post that I found. Sorg's going to bring up the nice picture over here for you. They have a safe space for essentially it's a parking space that's available for online meetups. So you buy something from a person on Craigslist and you don't want to have them come to your house. You don't want to go to their house, obviously. Where is some sort of neutral location that you can meet? Uh, Instead of trying to figure something out, the Harmer Township has a meetup spot. And the nice thing about their meetup spot is that it is at the police station and it's under surveillance of the police station. So like you have camera coverage and different things like that. So in case some creeper is meeting you to, you know, do something weird, you have a safe spot that you can go. Is it under surveillance from the police station? I I think they said that it's positioned with cameras oh wow it, it actually says right on the okay. sign um live video recording in case of emergency call 911 yeah so oh, yeah wow. and it was also um the you're off camera you're off uh microphone sorry oh. <laughs> donated by offer up which is one of those huh. one of those yeah. you know one of those apps that's pretty cool. um, that I think I just bought my, I got this TV from uh, in here. So, um, yeah, no, no, that's really awesome. And, 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 and I think it's needed, you know, and it's not, it's not like a town that I would think of it. So I'm wondering like what other police stations in the area might have, uh, these kinds of things, especially something like offer up is providing it and good on them to recognize something. Like mm, that. that is neat. Did I see one of the submissions be the immersive theater, scary, Yes, in Orlando. I want to talk about that. Absolutely. Uh, That was actually submitted by uh, Chris Whitlatch, Mm -hmm. who does a lot of that fun stuff here. And will be joining us in September. Yes. I'm a big fan. So, yeah. Tell us all about that, Marta. No. So, I was (laughs) was reading up of this. It's it's a haunted attraction. I'm going to call it an attraction in Orlando. And basically, they are combining escape rooms, immersive theater, and like a scary haunted house all in one. It takes place outside. Uh, it's about an hour long and they're using different tech in your flashlights to make the experience uh, a little bit crazier for you. Um, there's actors along the way, I believe. They send you different texts before your planned visit so you can really kind of get in to the whole experience, which I'm totally into. It has a bit of a Stranger Things vibe from the yes. looks of things. Yeah, they actually write that in the article that it's 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 like a throwback to Stranger Things. Not as much Blair Witch, but um, 
stuff like that. I think that looks really cool. I love. I'm I'm curious what they're going to do in terms of escape rooms for it though. If they're going to have like some sort of clue you have to get out of, um, something like that. Because we have something like that in Pittsburgh, that uh, Castle Blood mm-hmm. is like that. We have Castle Blood. We have the Imaginarium. We have Escape Room Pittsburgh. Yes. You know, and, you know some of some of them around. You know, a little more theatrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, we have, we have some of the best because I've done mm. escape rooms all over the world, and I will say I I haven't seen anything as good in terms of just escape rooms as mm. Enter the Imaginarium in terms of production value and just all around scenery. It's crazy. It's awesome. I know. Um, so oh, I'm addicted. I, I just missed the thing. I know it was on Orlando Orlando Informer, but I didn't catch the website for this. Um, hold on, I just had the video. Best, uh, the Beast of Blackwood is is the uh, is the uh, name of it. If you want to check it out and look it up, the Beast of Blackwood. The Beast of Blackwood, um, thirty five dollars per person. That's yeah. not bad, actually. Most escape rooms are right around there, mm-hmm. twenty five thirty five. Excellent. Um, also, uh, Riz, of course, uh, dropped us a couple of uh, a pretty good uh, gaming related one. Uh, first of all, under consideration, the Paris Olympic Committee is talking about including gaming. Of course, it's been pretty big lately. Uh, the Major League Gaming, uh, the NBA teams that are doing doing <laughs> gaming around. Like, have you heard about this? About like, no, I'm just laughing because it's like it. Uh, it's like the movie The Wizard. Yes, like, come to life. Basically, <laughs> That's yes, amazing. Basically, um. If you, Speaking of the wizard, when I was at we play FX and I was I was chatting with people about you know around the Doctor Mario competitions mm-hmm. I was working for volunteering, and uh, they talked about like yeah I did the world the Nintendo World Championships and my head is like like the wizard like the reveal of Mario three right 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 but it turns out it was like they, it was a thing they did at Best Buy across um, America womp, womp. Which, but there was there was one that came to Pittsburgh because it was at the old convention center because mm. I did it when I was a kid and it was before the wizard came out really and it was like a lead up to that yeah mm. and they, they had, had a huge they had, promotions for that movie I mean they really and, killed it back then for and the what champion they did. the championships were a real thing yep and you know there there was the cartridge in the back of the Nintendo powers that was like oh you could win this and it was like this special edition like Mario and Tetris and like one other game and and you had to get so many points in this and then get so many points in Tetris and then so many points in the next thing and that was the competition it was a specially kind of formatted cartridge um of those games so so anyways so it's become bigger twitch and 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 major league gaming and dota and and starcraft and all these things so so now we have multiple nations that are like china starcraft is really big uh dota i think is kind of everywhere um korea has a few games that they're like really specialized in so now the olympic committee is is seriously looking at these as things that can be Legitimate. included in i would the watch Olympics. that <laughs> <laughs> when it, wasn't i mean it, i wasn't would it? i would wasn't it EA a couple about a month ago that that came forward and said they're they're raising the minimum pay to all the Overwatch players, the professional Overwatch players, to oh. fifty grand plus bonuses? Jeez. Wow! <laughs> so I mean, it's a it's definitely you could well, a livable wage with mm-hmm. virtual reality. I feel like they have to step up their game with that as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's even though virtual reality scares the crap out of me. But. Okay, well, that, that then this next story makes sense too. Uh, how about a VR game Ugh. that you're all in the same room and it's a zombie escape game? And here, there's going to be in this video here, you can see like what it looks like. You're now here's what so you're going to see each other in the space and everything, right? But but what scares me is the one person that was apparently swinging a sword of some sort. I'm just completely going to kabonk the people around me with that thing. Um, you know, even though I completely see where they're at. I don't know. So you're walking around in a room. It knows where you're at. It, you, you see everybody else It know, you know, you're holding, you're holding gun shaped things and looks like a proton pack. Uh, and, and, and it, it takes you through and and you're with your friends and it's a a very interactive. I'm loving these headsets and it has kind of the motion tracking balls and everything. And then you end up your own in a cliff. That's great. Um, this is in Russia. They're going to be opening a location in London as well. And I did miss what the name of the game is. Uh, so you say, if, I'm sorry, John, go ahead. 
if you hit the other player with your sword, are they out? Like, do you kill them? I think so. I, I think it'll think interact so, with yeah. that. Also, like, but, like friendly fire? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, also, you're going to physically hit them with the sword. Um, oh, God. It's called Anvio VR, A N V I O V R, if you want to look up more information about this. <laughs> also, code for destroying friendships. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> From D&D to the whole other end of this, right? I mean, it kind of feels like the the laser tag kind of thing, just a little more to it. Uh, and, and really, they're just kind of in an empty room. But, and of course, you know, they're seeing platforms that they have to step over and everything like that. But I wonder how that reacts when you, like, fall off a platform. Oh, man. Like, like, you know, do you physically, like, visually fall and now you're in a separate place or something or or what happens there? So. That's a lot of... That's a lot of um signing your life away when you, when you oh, step yeah. up to the place. Oh, there's a waiver to this <laughs> yeah. thing. It's, like, it's few... like 10 pages long. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. What? Keep in mind that this is Russia that's doing this right oh, now. Oh, yeah, there's no they... waivers. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> but it's a good test field for when it comes here. And Soviet Russia waiver signs you. Um... <laughs> the Russians. I am going to destroy Russia. Sorry. Glow. I was like, you watched some Glow. I love Glow. Yes, Glow was I amazing. Glow. glow was absolutely amazing. Um, so uh, you know, speaking of new technologies that will obviously take over the world, um, and and probably conquer us, a room service robot was <laughs> one they found. It's called Aura. It's in Singapore, and it's at the M Social Hotel. And uh, it, it's it's you know not replace you're not aiming to replace you know their workers or anything, but just something that will like bring you you know your packages and your your room service and everything like that. And it looks like it's straight out of like something I saw on like Short Circuit thirty mm-hmm. years ago, nineteen eighties. So, um, but you know it it just and it goes and docks itself and it has a little. Let's see if we get a video here. See, it's got a little like pop up kind of storage oh, situation. Uh, so, so here's here's my thought on it. I think I would be happier if it looked like Rosie from the Jetsons. Yes, I could definitely get a little bit more behind it if it did. It looks like a kiosk on wheels. Yeah, it, it looks does. like a trash can on wheels. <laughs> uh, like, like I'm I'm sorry, that's all that I'm seeing is. Mm-hmm. I love that the the signs say that like we're down below. They're like the hotel is not looking to replace their employees with robots, and then it's like this is a robot that's bringing you shit. Sorry. I swore. Oh, you're good. Okay. I love, well, I love this guy because he looks so like upset about the robot coming up to him. Like he looks offended, and he just has his newspaper. <laughs> like now, get away from me. Sorry, Chilla. I'm also wondering, like, if I was in an elevator and I saw one of these things roll in and it was going to someone's room, I would definitely be tempted to reach over and see what's inside. Like, what prevents? Like, is there? Something that uh, keeps others from walking by this in the hallway and just tapping it and opening it up. Maybe yeah. room key. You lock. Yeah. yeah, or your room key or something. Or it's, it's kind of a spatial thing, you know, where it kind of knows where it is and when not to open it. Mm-hmm. It could yeah. be locked in some sort of device when it gets to that certain room, it unlocks. And what what's like the capacity of what it's carrying? I would imagine it would be like, like it said, water, mm-hmm. a newspaper, but like I'm not pulling a sandwich out of that thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> it could I don't be like, trust it. It could be like a refrigerator on wheels. Uh, no, I'm, I don't trust it. What would be funny is if you grabbed your newspaper and then put your old half-eaten sandwich back, back in there. In. For the next person. <laughs> Food you. <laughs> uh, Chilla, oh, Chilla. That's what, funny. What, what, what stories do you want to you touch on here from what you uh, have in the box? The, the, um, the, we've covered AstroPad, which is kind of like a photo sh- very a Photoshop based application to use your iPad as a second screen. We've also covered duet display. I um, live with duet display. Duet display. You, yep. a duet so, display so. plus a uh, final cuts, more recent addition of being able to do a second screen for like putting the video up that you're editing has been fantastic for me. So, so Astro pad, um, kickstarted the the astro headquarters who created astro pad studio which is definitely based like i was saying with photoshop in mind from doing the same thing kind of as duet display um they launched a product on kickstarter today called luna display and it turns any ipad into a second wireless display um what i like about this is keyword on wireless display mm. <clears throat> so i'm definitely interested to see what this would be like i think one of the powers of duet display that makes it 
so lag free is the fact that it is wired in. So I'm interested to see how they've conquered the wireless side of it. Um, interestingly enough, it's actually a dongle because we love dongles that plugs into your laptop in either the USB C or mini display port. So it's actually making your, it's using the standard display port instead of dr driving data across USB. Um, you can use a USB cable, um, but the, the the display dongle lets it go wireless, and I, I'm I'm actually probably going to go out and and kickstart this. Um, they immediately raised about three hundred percent of their goal in the Jeez. first few hours. What? Um, and at a, at a sixty dollar pledge, um, I I feel that this device is worth it, especially because it's not it's not traversing. From what it looks like, it's not traversing your wireless network. It's a point-to-point -point connection from the iPad directly to the Display Port on your laptop. Huh. Um, the only unfortunate thing is that it is a May 2018 launch, um, so we're we're months and months and months away, much most like any other Kickstarter campaign. Um, but them hitting ninety thousand out of the thirty thousand they were looking to do. And the quality that they have with Astropad, um, it's definitely something I'm interested in. Sorry. And then in the link, there's a, there's a couple there's a couple videos in there. Not that you necessarily. Oh, you are playing them. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, we're playing a little bit of this, so we're seeing the little dongle and everything like that as you're you're kind of discussing it. And it looks cool because it looks like it's kind of a realistic like this is your Mac as a touch screen kind of idea. As I completely have this old junky. Windows 10 laptop that I've been doing that here during the show, right? Until the battery died. Um, you I know, need to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be like tech school for, uh, you know, 30 somethings. The catch you up. Yeah, like tech 101, but really it's just all the new tech that's coming out explained mm -hmm. very easily. That's what we try to do here. <laughs> <laughs> but like hands on with yeah, the actual exactly. physical thing. Be like, uh. I would not know what to do with that thing. It's not a bad idea. I mean, I'm just saying. There you go. There you go, Chilla. We can we can spearhead that. Yeah, we we could actually we should we should kick it off at PodCamp. Oh, let's uh, we'll we'll fill you in on what's happening with PodCamp. Actually, can oh, we, okay. Can we discuss that? Can we mention that? What? Give me a microphone. Hey. Uh, what's happening with PodCamp? Are, give give her we... give her two turntables and a microphone. Yes. <laughs> are we ready to? wrap the show because i can i can take I mean, it home we with can us. i mean we, we can yeah i think it's a good good point okay um we're about that time all right yeah if, if you're ready to take it home i'll take it home with PodCamp. so uh PodCamp, yes there is a PodCamp this year it is going to be the weekend of september 30th and october 1st so we get the little monthly crossover there it is going to be at point park university and what we were discussing as an organizing committee is Having us do the presentation end of things on Saturday. So you're going to have the PodCamp people providing the basic, uh, you know, podcasting, social media, blogging, and a couple other just basic tracks. We're going to keep it open for other people to kind of fill in the rest of that day with 10 other sessions. And then Sunday is going to be, all right, we taught you how to do this yesterday. Now we're going to put it into action. We're going to work with you to actually do this. Uh, so podcasting was one of the biggest things that we, that was talked about. So you go into Sorg's podcasting, essentially 101, 201, 301, truncated together, get your basic notes and information there. And then you want to go ahead and do a podcast, but you're still not sure about it because they throw a lot of information at you on Saturday. Sorg and his fellow podcasting compatriots are going to be there to help you kind of walk through what your podcast is what you're going to need for your your tech and your setup for it and they're going to show you kind of hands-on with it and it can be one of those situations where we have some people sign up and we randomly select you know so many people if we get a huge grouping of people that want to do it that we hand select you know just randomly different people we put your thing together while using it as a tutorial for other people who want to kind of come around and take notes and see it in action we're going to do the same thing for social media, both uh, Twitter and Facebook and some of the other stuff, uh, as well as uh, websites and pod, or not podcasts, but uh, 
blogs with Squarespace and WordPress to kind of do the same sort of thing. So that's that's what we're talking about doing. And the PodCamp site has been updated. So we've got some additional information up there for anybody who wants to check it out. That's uh, podcamppittsburgh.com. And we've going to, we're going to have some additional announcements and such over the next couple of days, couple of weeks, and a couple of months leading into the event. I'm going to just barrage everyone with, <laughs> come to PodCamp, come to PodCamp. So come basically, to PodCamp. day one is going to be typical PodCamp as you remember it, yep. you know, sessions and, and, you know, and we're talking about doing something interesting for the keynote as well to kind of get people moving with things. And, uh, and beyond that, and so, so people want to submit for... Uh, sessions where like i said it's going to be we have what two open rooms of, of five, sessions five blocks two open rooms so we essentially right. have 10 open sessions and, and, and we are going to be very selective this year usually mm-hmm. in, in years past it's been if you pitch a session unless it's completely horrible and you sound like you're a snake oil salesman we let you pit or we let you, you, know, you. versus this year if it's like three of us want to talk about wordpress well okay then we're, we, we need to pick and choose well even even the wordpress thing i think unless it's Unless it's something outside of the scope that can be discussed on Sunday when mm-hmm. we're doing the the hands-on, I think it's going to be one of those things that, okay, we're going to cover the basics for WordPress. If you want to learn more, come back on, on Sunday and we're going to work with you, which also means that we're going to put a call out for specialists with each of these different things, so podcasting, WordPress, Squarespace, so that it's not just our group of five people teaching everybody how to do it the next day. It's kind of a network community teaching event where we can have, you know, I want to reach out to, to Crystal O'Connor with Libsyn. She usually does our podcasting 101, 201, and 301 sessions. And to have her and some of the other people from Libsyn on hand to help firsthand with the podcasting instruction on Sunday, I think would be a really great opportunity. So that's that's the game plan. That's the vision. And we're about two months out. There you go. It's happening. It's happening. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Mixing it up a little bit, keep it fresh, and we'll have information about the meet and greet as well. Which you we... know, somebody has a perfectly awesome space yeah. here in Beachview, and yeah, it's right on the T line, so anything. it's easily accessible. Nice from window, downtown. people walking by, you know. <laughs> so yeah. So there you go, podcastpittsburgh dot com. Um, we'll be in there in, in some form uh, as well. Actually, I'm going to be doing the. Uh, uh podcasting for 101 of course so well it's yeah podcasting whatever we're calling it <laughs> intro to podcasting well if you pull up the website i actually I, have the information i'm too busy there. watching this fashion blogging in pittsburgh oh, with uh, video Mystic, yeah. uh, that's uh this Sorry. panel from last year that's <laughs> yes, one of the videos from last year but seriously if sorry if you if you pull it up there's actually a schedule that's kind there of is. filled out with with our basic so you have an concepts. idea you have an idea about uh when if you can only make it one day or a section and see if it's something yeah that, if, if uh, you're if you're going to pick a day to come to pod camp i would suggest it be sunday this year mm. just just gonna throw that out there because i think mm. i think if you're looking to really get down to the nitty-gritty with it i think you're gonna get more out of sunday than saturday wow hmm. yeah, it's gonna be hands-on if you're somebody who likes the hands-on yeah. That's going to be the way to go. So, all right, Marta. What's up? Marta on the move. <laughs> like, oh, it's me. <laughs> where, where where can people find you? And is there anything coming up you want to to, to let people um, know yeah. about? Uh, you guys can find me on martaonthemove.com, Twitter at I Can't Find Marta. I have two events coming up. One is on Friday the 13th, uh, my part three of True Spooky Stories of Pittsburgh with John Shalkowski from the odd, mysterious, and fascinating history of Pittsburgh. We're doing that at Carnegie Coffee Company on Friday the 13th as a live podcast. And keep open your schedules for January 5th. I have my 100th episode celebration. I'm bringing back the match game at City Theater where I'm going to pull contestants out of the audience. I'm going to bring them on stage. We have uh, Pittsburgh celebrities, Rick Seaback, Kelly Mays coming, comedian Dave Bracey, and Magic by Lee Turbosic, Music, Drinks by Helicon Brewery. It's going to be awesome. And you can find the tickets on Eventbrite under Marta Match and also True Spooky Stories of Pittsburgh. There you go. Go check it out. John Chichilla, he's chillatech.net. Dot net, chilla on the Twitter, John Chichilla on the Facebook. There you go. Um, that's it. Nothing, nothing big coming up. For hey, you? Uh, no? Actually, for, uh, stay tuned tomorrow. Samsung is doing another unpacked event, so we're probably going to see more devices. There you go. Are, are you are you going to be getting your your hands on Android Oreo that was announced yesterday after the eclipse? I, 
I will. I do not have a Nexus device capable of running oh. it. But one of the interesting announcements that was in tandem with that, um, Google has promised um, that there's a number of vendors, including Samsung, that will have Oreo updates out by the end of the year. Um, since this is Samsung's uh, last major device of 2017, I'm guessing we're going to see Oreo hit relatively quickly, as well as I'm hearing rumors that the the Oreo update for some vendors is being uncoupled from the carrier. So we will potentially see some of those devices. But from what I'm hearing, Krauss may be getting a device or upgrading to a new device that will get Oreo. So we may be able to what? tap on him for a quick preview. Krauss, I sent you some dates. Let me know when you went on the show out there. Uh, all right, go check it out. <laughs> we'll be talking about that, of course, in the Awesome Cast Facebook group and uh, on social media and everything. Uh, lean up, and I'm, I'm sure more in the coming weeks. Um, again, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. Subscribe, rate, review, patreon.com slash awesomecast, or share the awesomeness with a friend. Thank you to our awesome guests. You've been our awesome, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. I had an awesome brain fart. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.